<laughs> okay, well, this is the first go at the uh, Microsoft Whiteboard, uh, analog Whiteboard. Uh, wanted to talk about a little bit, and we'll test it and see if it works. This is a, I haven't even tried it, so this is, you're learning with me. Um, let's talk about Teams networking architecture. We'll give you one little thing uh, on how Teams works as a client, uh, and how it finds the optimum path, and what it looks like from a Whiteboard perspective. So this is my Teams client, right? Teams, let's see if that works. Now let's stand in front of it. Oh my God, that's fantastic. Uh, Teams works in a way that uh, is unlike Skype, right? In Skype, we had a data center model. We had a Skype online perspective that was really Skype on-prem, just uh, forklifted into um, our, our cloud. But it really was just an on-premise infrastructure in the cloud itself. It was not designed for the cloud. It was designed for a data center. It was designed to be uh, in a local geographic area and serve all those users in that area. Teams is vastly different. The Teams uh, client and the Teams uh, infrastructure was built from the cloud first, with a cloud perspective, with uh, architecture and topology as the primary reason to use Teams, uh, and it got away from that data center model. We have 55 data center, Azure data centers and accounting around the globe, and Teams is in each one of those. What that's great is, is that Teams has the capacity to find that local data center and log in accordingly. So let's, for example, this Teams uh, user is in the US. That's so cool. And we'll even say it's East Coast. That's super cool too. Um, and then we'll just say this team's client is um, in Japan, right? In the Skype model, what would have happened if in, in Skype, this user in the US would have logged into Skype and we'll just say Skype is in the United States. That's great for the United States person, but what about that Japan person? That Japan person actually has to go all over the world, halfway across the world, in order to get into that United States data center. This right here is latency. This is here is jitter. This is here is um, increased RTT or round trip uh, time for your TCP packets. That means slow. The great thing about this, let's erase this. Mm -hmm. The great thing about this one, oh, look at that, that's so cool, is that the Teams client and I'll just make it like this, right? He's a little client. The Teams client will actually log in to your Office 365 tenant located in a um, Azure, what we call PurePoint. That PurePoint is what we happen to know is on the East Coast because this user's on the East Coast. What's going to happen is he's going to get or she's going to get an IP address that's assigned to the East Coast. What Teams does is it says basically this, teams.microsoft.com. I know from this IP address, I'm on the East Coast, EC. That means I'm gonna go to the, local, the closest data center, and that is right here. And we'll just say it's probably in DC or, or Arlington or, or Sorry, somewhere around that. I didn't quite catch that. I wasn't talking to you, Siri. In Japan, same thing, right? So I have an IP address. Uh, uh, in East Asia, what it's going to do is going to route me to the Office 365 data center. I don't know exactly where it's at. We'll just say it's in Japan, right? So that way, that user logs into that Japanese data center. This East Coast user logs into the East Coast data center. And when they join a meeting, they actually don't have to cross the entire Atlantic or Pacific Ocean, depending where you're at. Here's what's even cooler, is obviously they need to talk but they talk this way. And what is this? It's super dark. Well, all these data centers are connected with dark fiber. Right? And what that allows us to do is all that information that this client is going to, all this Japanese information that client's using, this is just the internet from a very small capacity, right? We'll make that a little cloud over here. Because obviously, from our client, our team's client, we have to get to this Office 365 data center 
And we do that by obviously going to the internet. But this internet path is much shorter than this internet path. What does that mean? Lower latency, faster RTT, faster performance. What's even cooler is, let's do this. What we've done here with Teams is we've gone to 2,700. Let me see how much uh, information I could write on this whiteboard without messing up. 2,700 plus ISPs, our internet service providers. And what we've told them is this. Anytime you see traffic for Teams, do not send it to the internet. I want you to send it directly to our Office 365 or our Azure Peer Points. Don't even go to the internet. And if you do go to the internet, do it the shortest possible path. And these 2,700 ISPs uh, are worldwide. So all the team's traffic is routed from the internet to the exact peer, uh, Azure peer, uh, peer point and dumped right there. What then happens is this. All this team's traffic is owned by us. This is our fiber. We don't rent it. This is Microsoft fiber, right? We don't just rent it and, and, and use it from somebody else. We own and control this. What that allows us to do is say, all these packets that are destined for teams, I want to prioritize. We call that QoS, quality of service. So what that means is, hey, there's going to be three levels of traffic, audio, video, and, and video, and, and sharing, screen sharing, application sharing, file sharing, all that stuff. What we're going to do is we're going to put this as the primary, this is the secondary, and this is tertiary or everything else. So what that means is any packet that hits that dark fiber, we're going to give that priority. We're going to put that ahead of all other traffic, web traffic, file traffic, SharePoint traffic, all that stuff. Why? Obviously, when your file in SharePoint gets there three seconds later, you don't care. You don't even know this. But when your team's traffic gets there three seconds later, you definitely notice. So what that allows us to do is this end user and this end user get the highest quality service no matter where they are at. I'm trying to call this guy. No matter where they're at in the world. And what's even cooler about that is, I got one little spot left. In a team's meeting, it's awesome. Because this Teams meeting is hosted virtually. So when I join from a US meeting, no matter if I am hosting it or not, I'm actually going to join that meeting wherever the closest data center is. Unlike Skype, where if this meeting was in the US, Japan had to go to the US to go to that meeting. And Teams, Japan has to go to the Japanese data center or the closest Azure SharePoint, I mean, uh, PeerPoint, to go to that meeting. All right. That is a quick rundown of Teams architecture, network architecture, and uh, whiteboard analog integration. That's pretty slick. <laughs>